Since I've taught 3D art, one thing that never changes is the mistakes we make when first learning about modeling and topology. For years, I've seen repeated mistakes for both sub-D and low-poly modeling. So today, I'm going to show you the most common topology mistakes, how to fix them, and a modeling tip that changed the way I approach 3D modeling. Mistake number one, not localizing your topology. Let's say you're modeling a character or prop and you need to add a bunch of edges. Easy. Let's insert edge loop a bunch of times, right? Wrong. This causes all sorts of issues, as you're adding edges and vertices in areas you just don't need, and I see this all the time in early 3D artists. Solution? Localize your topology. This involves splitting polygons so you only add edges in areas that you need them, keeping your topology local. At a high level, you're taking one face or polygon and splitting it into two, four, or six faces. This helmet is a great example. These edges are being localized to this specific area to tighten this corner. Without localizing the topology, we mistakenly add edge loops in areas that we just don't need, making for a messy model. It also works well while you're modeling on flat surfaces and you need to add more detail for things like circular cutouts and extrusions. I have an entire video devoted to this in more detail, so make sure to check that out after this video. And shout out to my good friend Bryce who sent me this awesome Mass Effect fan art character model for this explanation. Mistake number two, not protecting your extrusions. This is a sneaky one, and I've seen this from even junior models in the industry. When you sub-D model, especially with hard surface models with intricate extrusions, a lot of artists do not add a supporting face loop to protect the extruded topology. Here's what I mean. Take this screw for example. You'll see the edges running right up to the corner of this screw hole. Notice how the highlight is being disrupted, making this clean corner look rougher than it should be. Now, look at it when I protect this extrusion with a supporting face loop. The highlights look much more consistent, especially when you're trying to achieve this hard surface look. This is great for vehicle modeling, hard surface props, and more. Mistake number three, avoiding end guns and tries. That's right, I said it. Tries and end guns are okay, but sometimes. The key thing to understand for both VFX and games is that quads are required when you're doing anything that involves soft body deformation. This is when the vertices and the edges of the model are deforming. Because trust me, your rigging and skinning artists will thank you for this, especially if you do the rigging yourself. Now, if you can maintain quads throughout your model, do it. But you don't need to pull your hair out to get rid of every single try and end gun. But at the same time, this isn't a justification for messy topology. It also helps to know that when you subdivide your mesh, Tries and guns do subdivide to quads. Take a look at this example. Now, having clean quads are preferred for other reasons besides subdividing. For example, clean quads give you sub -D meshes that give you on-the-fly level of detail when you need to zoom into your mesh for super close-up shots. This is expected when you're doing VFX or marketing and advertising and you have to zoom in super close to your model. Clean quads also give you a much easier time UV mapping by allowing you to easily select your edge loops for those nice clean seams. And as I said at the beginning, and most importantly, they are needed for soft body deformations like character animations. Another point is context matters. Understand if you walk into a studio and they say minimize and remove end guns and tries, then you better follow their pipeline. There are some studios that don't require this, but there are some that do. If you don't take my word for it, here's an example from Andrew Hudson, who's a senior hard surface modeler at ILM, DNEG, and Method Studios. These are some of the biggest VFX studios out there. In this art station post called Production vs. Concepts, you can see how tries are used to quickly create and iterate on different concepts. But when the models are ready to be pushed through the production pipeline, they need to be quads for that sub-D level of detail and all the other points that I brought up earlier. So if you're interested in working in the VFX industry, be sure to check Andrew out. In the game industry, we have real-time 3D model. Now, the key thing to understand for games is quads are still required when you're doing anything that involves soft body deformation, which is when, again, the vertices and edges of the model will be deforming. This includes character models, especially in areas of deformation like the face, hands, elbows, pelvic, or knees. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have rigid body animation, where tries are fine. Let's take a look at this gun model from one of my Discord members, Bruno. You can see that tries are fine here because the objects themselves will be animating. Take the revolver, cylinder, hammer, or trigger and see how they're being animated. Each of these parts will be animated separately, but not deforming, so the vertices and edges will stay rigid, meaning the topology doesn't require quads. Now, knowing that, you can have your topology be more real-time or game-focused. This allows you to use tries to help with the optimization process and allows you to be more strategic with your topology and edge flow. Keep in mind, you can do both, which is model a sub-D and low-poly model. 
For example, this workflow involves modeling a high poly sub D model, adding in all of your detail, including sculpting, then bake that down into a texture for your low poly modeling. Both Bryce and Bruno use these workflows to create each of their respective models. This is a topic I've covered before, and I'll be talking more about this in the future, so make sure to keep an eye on my channel. Bonus tip, if you found this helpful, be sure to check out my Patreon. You'll get access to my private Discord community with a bunch of fantastic artists, including the ones that I featured in this video like Bryce and Bruno, access to my 3D assets, Assets, more in-depth real-time workflow videos, private tutorials, and maybe some streams, and access to whatever questions that you have. Mistake number four, not enough edges for your sub D or too many for your low poly. When you subdivide, you're interpolating between edges and vertices, and when you don't have enough edges, you lose the original form and volume of your 3D model. A good rule of thumb is your sub D mesh should look like you're applying the auto smooth or soften edge, and its form should not change much when you subdivide. If it does, then you're modeling wrong, so don't rely on sub-D surface for form. To fix this mistake for sub-D modeling, you need to make sure that you have an even distribution of edges. This allows your model to subdivide more predictably and accurately. For low poly modeling, you want to do the opposite. The number one priority in games is to preserve the silhouette. Now look, I'm not here to talk about poly count with you guys, because context matters. Now, this is going to be the first time I kind of go into rant mode, so bear with me. I can say, hey, here's this model that I made that's 20k tries, Someone out there will say, wow, that's a lot. I could do that in 2K tries. It doesn't matter. What matters is the context that this model is being used. If you know low poly optimization techniques, then the only poly count that matters is the one set by your studio. Now, of course, there are ranges. Something like 200 to 300K for hero characters on current gen consoles, maybe 10 to 20 for mobile, or even lower. These are just ballpark numbers and estimates. I myself, I've made real-time models that were like 100K tries and some that were less than 10 or even 1K. So again, the context and the workflow is what matters here, not some arbitrary number that someone brought up on a forum or comment. As I was putting together this video, I came across this comment from Tim, aka Champ for Zone on YouTube. Tim has been working for AAA Game Studios as a senior weapons artist, and he summarized this topic about context and poly count really well. He's creating assets for first person shooters, so the weapon models need to support higher fidelity since the models are closer to the camera. If he was making a top-down or third-person game where the screen size and pixels being used by the weapons were a fraction of the size, then of course the models would be much more optimized. Another great resource is 3D character artist Nicolay. He covers the game character art process and gives real-world examples of topology optimization workflows. So be sure to look at how professionals are doing things in industry. That is going to be one of the best ways to learn about 3D modeling and topology, not some random post online. Okay, so rant over. Now, to bring this one back for low poly modeling, what matters is the context the asset is being used for. Given that the priority should be the silhouette of the model, how close it will be to the camera, and removing any unneeded edges and vertices. Mistake number five, putting all your detail in the base model. This is a tip that changed how I model because it blew my mind when I first got into the industry. My workflow used to involve modeling all the detail and topology into the base mesh and then subdivide. My thinking was, this is supposed to be the last step in the modeling process. But as you can imagine, you get all sorts of smoothing issues when you have intricate topology details. When I approached one of the senior modelers, they said, just model the base, subdivide, then add your extra intricate details. That'll minimize the surface issues. And I said, I was like, wait, what? We can do that? After I started implementing that workflow, I really felt like I leveled up. For example, you can see this firsthand with a Datsun that I modeled on my channel here. Previously, Junior Mew would model something like the door handle into the base mesh. This would be a pain topology-wise and cause surface issues. Instead, what I do now is model the main form, subdivide, then add details like the door handle later. I did the same thing for the Mandalorian helmet, the Cyberpunk grenade, and a bunch of other assets I modeled on my channel. Long story short is I use this all the time. It allows you to maintain much cleaner topology while minimizing surface issues. So I really hope that you enjoyed that last tip because really that was a game changer for me. So to wrap up, let me know if I missed any topology mistakes down in the comments below. What were some challenges that you ran into or some hurdles when learning 3D modeling and topology? Did you overcome any big hurdles like the one I overcame with tip 5? Be sure to share that down below and I'll see you around.